G'day everybody, Duckville here, another game from the Vroom 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 tournament which took place up in Brisbane, lots of fun, had a lot of fun with the people there. Uh, this is going to be another game between our two grand finalists, of course, unfortunately due to the, sort of how the replays ended up, I don't actually have them in order, nor were they, uh, I, I'm not even sure if I got every single one, but um, this is the match, grand final match between Wet Towel, starting down here in the bottom left hand side in the red as our Terran player, against his Zerg opponent in the blue, NXZ. Now, um, as I said, I wasn't exactly sure about the order of the replays, um, but um, these guys played a fantastic best of seven. It was really good to see the uh, both of them do really well and get through to the grand final, of course. Um, and uh, at the end of this game, obviously, we'll announce who won it and who won the $100 prize and then who won the uh, little trophy as well. He was very happy about it. But uh, as we can see, both the guys just sort of having a little bit of banter about uh, what what's going on with the map, of course. Wet Town perhaps a little unsure or not. I think he was just joking. But um, yeah, so the tournament, of course, um, as I said, run by Vroom Vroom Vroom, a car rental company. You can go and check them out yourself if you'd like. Uh, doing a great job setting up all the events, uh, getting it all running. It did a beautiful job actually running it, considering considering it went from being a tournament that was only going to be about uh, sort of like eight or eight or ten people or something like that, um, and then became suddenly a 64-player tournament almost. Um, they did a fantastic job of actually running the whole thing um, using uh, Binary Beast as the uh, as like the tournament system. Um, and then, yeah, just making sure everything ran really smoothly. I was really impressed for, for like a first time sort of event uh, event management. It was really good. So uh, props to them for that and, of course, for the tournament itself. Having a look at the game here, we've got Wet Tau grabbing his gas. Not going to be doing a fast expand as he had done in a prior game. He does get a tech lab up, so we may see... Uh, Reapers. Not every day you see Reapers uh, in TVZ anymore. Although lately, with um, with the, the little changes to Queens, uh, with or I suppose it's not a little change. It's apparently uh, changed the whole dynamic of this matchup. Um, some players have, have opted to go for a much earlier sort of pressure, trying to kill one or two drones if you can, um, with a with a very early Reaper or two. Uh, normally you won't be able to get too much more than two or three kills, but, um, you know, if you can get more than that, if you have some absolutely ridiculous micro like your Grubby or someone like that, um, you may get a couple more, but, uh, usually by the time the Reaper is built and gets across the map, as we can see here, it's only just about to finish up now, uh, the spawning pool will complete, and a couple of Zerglings will be out at a minimum, even a Queen can be out on some maps that, uh, favor a much longer distance, but behind this, he is gonna get the Command Center down at the Natural, so keeping everything uh, all in check here of course getting up a little bit of tech getting the Reaper and then getting the command center down at the natural meanwhile for NXZ getting his drones up as you normally do as a Zerg as we can see 19 drones 20 now at the moment got a couple more on the way the Queen is coming out from the main base and also there is one at the natural as well but the Reaper just gonna hop inside find a couple of drones he's gonna try and chip off one there's one maybe two don't think so the Queen is now out and she's gonna be able to easily defend against this and the Lings come along just to make sure of everything uh, and that guy has to retreat for the moment so a little bit of pressure one drone you know it's it's not a massive thing for NXE it's not uh, it's not game breaking it's not something that's gonna just then completely annihilate any options that wet towel has if my mouse will start working correctly um, what this does it gives him a little bit easier access to the factory as we can see here got that starter getting a reactor as well and uh, he should be able to put a little bit more pressure on perhaps with a hellion or two if he can maybe do a drop or something like that inside the main I've actually seen QXC do a very cool drop with uh, with Hellions and like it's a couple of Hellions and a few Reapers as well you drop inside the mineral line and then just stuff just dies instantly if there's no immediate defense because obviously the uh, the Hellions do a little bit of splash damage and then the Reapers just do their very quick uh, bursty sort of damage which just does massive amounts of uh, uh, sort of chaos inside the mineral line, but uh, as we can see, Wet Tau going very much more standard than QXC does. He does have uh, the natural up, and he also has 
has a third, very quick third command center here. He's doing this uh, similar build to the one that he did on Ohana, although opening up with a uh, with a Reaper, slight difference there. And it looks as if he will get a couple of Hellions out to see if he can get some map control as well. Because this one Hellion, he's not able to really sit on the Watchtower, because as soon as some Zerglings come in, he's going to be in a quite a lot of trouble. But what he can do is sit up on this high ground, pick off any units that, f that float by, and uh, just sort of keep a little bit of minor map presence that way. But uh, NXZ keeping his uh, his own strat, very similar here. Double Evo Chambers out. We've got extra Queens. I think that's a total of four. Yes, it is. So we got four Queens out. That means we've now got a total of... Uh, how many active tumors? I think, yeah, we're going to have a total of four active tumors at the moment. Meanwhile, through the middle, Hellion's catching out a couple of the Zerglings here, chasing after another one that was attempting to get away all the way up to the top base here, and he will not get too far. Hellion's doing the damage, taking out that Ling. So, uh, again, that map presence at the moment goes to where Tal is going to have good... He should have good vision once he clears out this, uh, this other tower here, and then he can hold both the towers, getting a uh, really nice amount of uh, vision of what's going on. Speaking of vision, NX uh, has an overlord just floating down the bottom side here. Oh, sorry, the left hand side is probably going to try and get inside the main if he can. He want, what he wants to see is where is that, uh, what is that factory doing? What is the, is there a starport? Is there a third command center like this? And, um, you know, if he can ascertain those things, he can determine when he is going to be able to take his third base and when he is going to be able to, uh, or, or, and, and what particular tech he needs to go to. But NXZ actually getting a Bailey Nest here, so this could be a bit of an attack coming up from him very soon. We've got a lot of links coming out. we got 18 in total. Just making sure, in fact, yeah, I think he's just making sure that he's got enough presence here to deflect those Hellions because, of course, once the Creep Tumor starts spreading out a little bit here, that's when the, uh, the Hellions might get a little bit more desperate to do attack. And as we can see, there are six Hellions out trying to poke in at the third base here, finding that there is nothing just as of yet. The Reaper also hanging out here. The drone that was coming along to put down the hatchery getting taken out very quickly. And in fact, speaking of very quickly, the Ling streaming around. Beautiful swarming uh, skills there from NXE. Getting inside, taking out four of the Hellions. Now the fifth and the sixth all going down. So he's taken back that map control for the time being, putting in a macro hatch and an infestation pit down, and the Baneling Nest also charging up those centrifugal hooks. So uh, NXC going to move into this uh, very heavy Ling Bling style. He's going to have the infestors around as well to get a little bit more sort of control on what his opponent's doing. Reaper just uh, poking by, seeing that there is a lot of creep spread. Uh, there he goes. He's going to perhaps jump off the cliff here. That would not be the best idea. There he goes. <laughs> Tries to get rid of some of the Lings there, but gets taken down pretty quickly and this creep spread from NXE is actually getting very very nice here he's coming across to this inside pocket base he's also through the middle three tumors just pushing there we got a couple more down at the bottom side as well so he's going to have really really good map vision and uh, also movement with all of his army of course the lings just absolutely fly when they're on the creep and then the roaches also do a good job as well if we get to them and also the bane links once they morph in will do quite a lot uh, they'll have quite a lot of speed to roll around and do all sorts of things. For Wet Talon at the moment, he's got his economy going really nicely here. That's one thing he's done uh, throughout the tournament, is have a really nice macro game going with that third command center, of course, really just smashing out as many SCVs as he can, dropping down mules on top of that third base. And there is that Overlord, just trying to scout in, sees the double E base, sees the third command center here as well. Probably not going to see too much more than that. There he goes, goes down, and uh, that is going to be it for the scouting at the moment for NXZ. But we've got a drop going on inside the main base, medevac coming through, going to drop off some of these marines, going to stim up and uh, do some damage here, maybe going to take out the queen, no they're not, what they're going to do is put some pressure on this base here, fungal growth going down, infestors just popping out in the nick of time, and the, uh, the medevac actually escaping with, I believe that was all of the marines intact, so uh, that's pretty good stuff here, meanwhile at the bottom side of the map, Plus one to weapons also, just to keep in mind, is only just about to complete. A little bit of a, an anti-timing here, unfortunately, but uh, obviously it's not going to be a huge issue. But three of the Marines at the front getting a little bit uh, trigger happy there, doing too much uh, blocking out their buddies. But the Queen may go down. Drones definitely do. Will the Lings be able to come back inside? The uh, Infestors blocking off a secondary attack here. Fungal wears off. Infested Terrans on the ground. Meanwhile, that other attack was deflected, not doing a huge amount of damage. Obviously got a couple of drones, but uh, then was able to escape, which is quite nice for uh, quite nice for Wet Towel, but NXC just really powering up his upgrades. We've got 2-2 about to complete. He's going to have a huge amount of Lings and Banelings 
ready to go on that map. And all the while, uh, Wet Towel, where is his tank count? We're sitting at a total of three at the moment. They do have Siege Tech, so he is going to be able to uh, sort of siege up this cliff position here to make sure he has a good range on wherever those Veinlings and Lings attack. And uh, he should be able to secure this third for the time being. But is he going to be able to hold it? That's sort of... I don't know if he's going to be able to hold it. There are so many Lings out on the map. Just looking at the total, we've got a uh, huge amount here. 120 Lings. If even just, uh, you know, 20% of those just switch into Bane Lings, this is going to get very interesting. And uh, NXC still establishing that third base. We've got the, uh, the fifth and the sixth gas going up. Medivac still hanging out just at the top side of the main. So there's a little bit of threatening there. And uh, that other Medivac down at the bottom. But uh, here we go. It looks as if NXC is perhaps going to move in. And he can see that there are some siege tanks up on the ridge here. Is he going to be able to do anything to them? I'm not sure. He doesn't have any air units yet, but he will have a couple of infested Terrans. I don't know if he wants to waste those, uh, or perhaps if it's waste. I'm not exactly sure if it's a waste, but uh, may want to try and use those on the tanks. There we go. Dropping in the beach ball, saying hello, boys. Uh, dropping in the infested Terrans, doing a lot of damage here. In fact, cleaning up both of the tanks. May even get Metamax while they're up there, which is a quite a good victory here, and deflecting an attack. And here we go. I think NX he has decided it's just time to go for it. He's uh, taken out a few of the tanks. That leaves the tank out at a number of three, which is still not too many here. And just leaving it as pure Ling Infesta coming straight through, ripping up all of those uh, Marines and the tanks that were on the ground. And the Ling's just going to town on everything that is available. And uh, remaxing, getting out a few more Ling's. 26 on the way, some Infestas, and Borotech is coming through for NXC, but the tanks on the high ground not doing too much apart from uh, laying, laying waste to their own SCVs at one point here, and NXC is just going to roll all over this base. Not enough defense, and I don't think there were enough sort of uh, bunkers here to help out, and uh, even without the Bane Links, NXC just able to roll through Infested Terrans cleaning up uh, siege tanks, not every day you see that, and SCVs fighting against Lings, not every day you see that, but uh, the siege tanks will go down, and that is going to be it from uh, for Wet Town, he's going to have to GG, and there it is, dialing out of this game, and NXZ takes this one. So, uh, that, that was the last one of this particular series I'm going to cast, because uh, the other ones, as I said, I'm not exactly sure which games there were and, and sort of which position in the series and that sort of thing but NXC won the uh, won the tournament did a fantastic job won the $100 prize which was really good and uh, of course won you know the pride of the day so good stuff from him uh, playing really really well with this sort of ling bling style that he has uh, sort of attuned himself to at the moment and uh, obviously for the rest of the guys there very special thanks to everyone who turned up um, our uh, our hosts, of course, Vroom Vroom Vroom, for putting up all the tournament. It was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.